Hi, everybody. My name is Ethan Johnson, and I'm an associate professor and chair of the Black Studies Department at Portland State. And I'm really excited about the opportunity to be able to talk about Cole Scott's work. Uh, the first thing I'd like to say is that I can identify with much of his work because of his focus on blackness. And by that, I mean the various ways the idea of a black person is represented. I also appreciate his lack of subtlety. He is most direct, which I appreciate. What I see often in his work is a focus on gender within the idea of blackness. He does his work on gender most often in conflict, tension, and antagonism to white people. Lastly, he is very concerned with the history, the present, and the relation to each other. In regards to his lack of subtlety and his focus on history, let's look at his painting, The Other Washingtons. In my interpretation, everyone in the painting are the other Washingtons. Those who are children of enslavement and all the white men that raped black women. This is what the legacy of enslavement and the terror of rape has produced. And Cole Scott is commenting on this. We have the stereotypes of criminality, drug addiction, athleticism, and hypersexuality that have resulted from America's history of rape. Less so, we see the effort to rise up out of this with education, where I see a politics of respectability with the two women on the left, an orientation towards whiteness with the light-skinned black man at the top. A politics of respectability refers to efforts by middle-class black people to define blackness within the confines of white heteronormative ideas, which seems so ironic considering America's history. Also, Gender and sexuality are all over the place in this painting. But let's shift to another painting to discuss the work on gender. On black gender, I contrast his two paintings, Color TV and T for Two, which I've been calling the Black Dandy. There are a number of observations I think important. Regarding T for Two, the black man in the painting is outlandishly dressed in checkerboard pants, a red turtleneck-ish sweater, and blue blazer with white shoes. He epitomizes an image of leisure and self-assuredness. He is content. He is paired with his apparent white wife. In some sense, his contentedness is based on her. He has made it because of her. She is his foundation. This speaks much about black male, female couplings. I would suggest too, that the pairing is sexualized through the white woman's visible garter. And this is clearly a part of their coming together. The non-black white butler emphasizes even more the having achieved status of the black dandy. But again, I would emphasize here the centrality and the foundation of the painting's white woman. I would contrast this painting with colored TV. Here the black woman is alone with the TV. She is comfortable and leisure also. We could argue content. She is watching the TV which shows a white Wonder Woman-like character who has large breasts compared to the black woman. The black woman has almost no indication of breasts and or they are sagging. Her hair is very short and gray, white. Is she old? Her sexuality is emphasized through the clothes she wears with the lone boot left on the ground, are we to think she just had sex? 
Do her clothes suggest she is a prostitute? I also believe Colescott has tried to imply some things here in regard to the white palm of the black woman and her clothes. Why is her palm white? Why does the white blouse she wear appear to be peeling off her? Is she trying to be white? Does she want to be white? If she was white, might she be more desirable to Cole Scott? He has depicted many women in his paintings, almost always in tension with white women. If, as Cole Scott says, his work is autobiographical, then what can we conclude? He has struggled with intimacy with black and white women. He seems to be saying that he has struggled with the pedestal status of white women as symbols of arrival, achievement, being content. He is very much aware black women struggle within this context and that within white mainstream media, in all its forms, black women have a lower status. He seems to be saying he has been shaped by this. Black gender and sexuality are always understood only through its conflict with white gender and sexuality. The last painting I would like to comment on, I think does everything we have discussed in the previous three. It's called St. Sebastian, and it's part of the series called Knowledge of the Past is Key to the Future. There is much detail, and a close read, I think, would be worthwhile. Center stage are half a naked black man and half a nude white woman, put together, tied to a pillar. They are both shot through with arrows, and the black man has his arm, it looks like, twisted behind his back. He's being forced into this position. On the black man's side of the put together figure is a white man's head and shoulders dressed in a shirt and tie with a noose around his neck that connects him to a black woman on the other side of the pillar whose neck is also in a noose. Under the white man's head is a pile of skulls with a creek running through them. There is much to pay attention to here. Floating above the white woman's side of the put together figure is the head and shoulders of a black woman whose neck is also in a noose, connected to the white man's noose. We can't see that the black woman wears any clothes. What does this mean? Her body and sexuality are emphasized, while who she is connected to, the white man's sexuality, is de-emphasized in that he wears a shirt and tie. The black woman and the white man's link are also deadly because they are both being hanged. But we don't get a clear reason why. Has this figure between them banned them from being together? There is so much spectacle of the white woman, black man, sex taboo, that we can't even conceive of why the white man, black woman coming together is deadly. It's hidden. Everyone is near dead in this painting. The idea of sex between black men and white women is central here. And many have been lynched because of this myth, represented in the skulls. The white man is the one who has committed these lynchings. It is he who is, who is responsible for this history and mythology. The black woman is being looked at 
by the put-together figure. She has no defining characteristics put on, put on her except her apparent nakedness and link to the white man who has violated her with no recognition of that violation. This is important. Struggle is defined in this painting as what has happened to the black man, not the black woman. Colescott is concerned with this silence on the suffering of black women, I suggest. Lastly, the pillar for me is America. This is what America is, near death. We are all dying because of this history that has not gone away. So again, Colescott is very concerned with the connections between history and gender and sexuality of black and white people. <laughs>